These videos should need no introduction anymore, so here we go. Hi, can you do an update on Where's Brendan Yuri and Panic at the Disco? Yeah, they're still MIA. Bro, how are you gonna put Rock and Roll Over at 12? I think it's a top 5 album with more songs you can think of, like Ladies Room, See You in Your Dreams, Take Me, and a lot more. I don't know how many times I have to say this, but there are certain albums that will entertain you that won't entertain me, and for Rock and Roll Over, that is one of the Kiss albums that just doesn't entertain me. I'm sorry. Josh Farrow believes in Christianity. You believe in LGBTQ+. You get offended when someone doesn't support LGBTQ, vice versa. Who gives a crap? Give everyone the liberty to think what they want. Alright, I don't know how you can believe in the LGBTQ+, when it exists. I'm just saying. I mean, Christianity exists too, but we don't know if this so-called God person exists. But the LGBTQ+, community, is a real thing, it's just, I think the word you're looking for is support it. I support it because I'm all for people being happy with being who they are, being themselves and not having to hide something about them because they know people will hate on it. And it wasn't just Josh Farrow in the whole Christianity thing, he's Christian, I get that, whatever. It's the fact that he compared homosexuality to pedophilia, like, they're the same thing for some reason, when being homosexual is just being attracted to someone of the same gender, and it's a consensual relationship, whereas being a pedophile, it's a relationship that literally cannot be consented to, and it's usually an older adult and a younger child, and that's illegal, whereas the first thing isn't illegal at all, so... I don't know if you saw the video, but my whole rip wasn't on, oh, he's Christian, he should shut up. No, it's more about, you know, you can believe what you want to believe, but at the same point in time, when you say something like this, it just, it, it's not really right. Like, he can say whatever the hell he wants, but in the end, what he said was wrong, and we all know that to be true. Using the title, The Corn Copycats, Chaos Sam is inaccurate both in its meaning and in the context of the vid, so maybe a question mark in the title would have been more appropriate, or meant as clickbait. It's meant as clickbait, kind of. I mean, I clickbait my videos, but at least I talk about the subject of the title of the video. I'm not, like, clickbaiting and not speaking about it. And the reason I titled it that without the question mark was, yes, because it would bring to people's attention, but I also wanted to show how ridiculous it was because, you know, every time I see a title like that, oh, this band, Chaos Zam, is copying Korn, and it was always the exact same song. It was that one song. I can't remember the name of it, but I went back and listened to their albums and any of their other material just to make sure that they were actually maybe blatantly copying Korn, but when I listened, I was like, it's just this one song. Like, there's other elements that would suggest that they're being, you know, um, inspired by Korn. But that one song in particular was the only song I listened to when I was like, yeah, Korn could sing this. Like, that is definitely Korn, the riffs, the vocals, all this kind of stuff. It wasn't me going, oh, yeah, no, they're full-on copycats. Again, I, I mean, you, you seem to have watched the video, so I don't understand why you're so mad, but it was like half clickbait and half just showing the irony in that statement when people title a video like that about the band and they just review that one song that everybody else has reviewed and don't even mention the other music that comes with it. I love your dedication to YouTube, not sure why you aren't way more popular than you are. Thank you, and it's because I don't mean YouTube's criteria. If I did, they would be putting me on the trending page for at least music-related stuff, review-related stuff, maybe even, at this point, DC and Marvel-related stuff, but, um, yeah. I'm just a small YouTuber to them, so what the fuck do they care? I mean, I understand the stuff he did, but didn't he steal some of Ryan Ross's songs? So this is about Brendan Urie again, and uh, the, some of the stuff he did, I guess he's talking about some of the stuff he's already apologized about, this, that, and the other, but um, from what I've heard with the whole stealing Ryan Ross's songs thing, there were a couple of songs that post Ryan Ross that they had wrote together, and Brandon and Spencer at the time, who was in the band, kind of rewrote and created their own song. Like, there's that song, Nearly, which is at the end of Vices and Virtues, that was intended for a scrapped Panic! at the Disco album that, yes, Ryan Ross did write most of it, but with that, Spencer and Brandon went back and kind of 
you know, rewrote it to make it fit the atmosphere of vices and virtues as opposed to what they originally had it. So that's like people saying Metallica used a lot of Dave Mustaine riffs or this, and that, and the other Cliff Burton riffs because most likely they did, but they probably rewrote a lot of it so that way it wasn't like stealing in this case. There's really nothing like Limp Bizkit when they're on It's Awesome. Like you said, tracks 1, 2, and Pill Popper are a lot of fun. Problem with them is that they can be at a high level and then they can be the cringiest thing ever. I've been saying this for years and I've been getting shit on. They have good songs and when they do good, they do really, really good. But then when they get back to the generic shit that they're doing, it just is like, alright, this is not funny anymore, please stop. And I'm glad that Brian here actually understands my whole point. I don't hate Limp Bizkit, it's just their inconsistency frustrates me. Haley Williams tweeted saying she's not in the movie before removing her social accounts. So, this is an update, and, I mean, it is what it is at this point. I was wrong, I can admit that. Even though, when you looked it up, and you looked on her, like, wiki page and all that filmography, she popped up in the voice acting for this movie. I don't even remember the name of it anymore. And I was like, oh, that's cool. She's she's dipping her toes into some, uh, some voice acting. But, um, no, it seemed that, uh... It's not true. Right before she deleted her social media account, she must have squashed the rumors there and said, I'm not in this movie, which is completely fine. But, you know, sometimes when you find stuff on the internet, it never always ends up being true. So I will take the L on that one. What the heck does Cancel Brendan even mean, LMAO? In this day and age, he doesn't even need record labels and all that shit. People would buy Brendan's music no matter what. I do agree with at least that part. I mean, Brendan Urie can just drop the Panic at the Disco name and I think he would be fine doing the whole solo career. What the heck does Cancel Brendan even mean? It means people wanted to end his career over false allegations. It's what it means. I, myself, again, in that video wasn't saying he should be canceled. I was just kind of going through what I saw and then when I looked more into it, I was like, oh, okay, so he's innocent then. He didn't do any of the stuff that was said, so why are people still freaking out about this? It just, I don't know, some people, I guess, again, like to hear what they want to hear. I honestly can't believe that Limp Bizkit fans actually like and will defend dad vibes. It's low effort garbage. See? I'm not the only one! I thought your original video just wasn't very good, and there are plenty of reviews of the song from people that didn't like it, that didn't get trashed. You mentioned they were generic back in the day when they created the genre. You said it didn't have many views when a little research would show it had a quarter of a million views between two channels. But more importantly, a review is about the song, so review it. The song isn't that serious, and before you even started the song, you said, I can already tell this is probably going to be cringy. Sounds pretty open-minded. The review didn't seem that grounded with any valid points, just some constructive criticism. I did review the song. I listened to the whole thing, and reviewed it, and gave you my thoughts on it. And again, I know you weren't supposed to take that song seriously. Limb Biscuit has songs that you're not supposed to take seriously. Like, do you really think that there's some sort of deep, meaningful story in the song Rollin'? Like, no, I know that. And it's an annoying song because it's just, it's attempt to, you know, be, I guess, more egregious than the other songs just falls flat. Like, the, a song doesn't have to be serious. I can, you know, go get down with non-serious songs, but at the same point in time, it's got to sound like you put effort into it. And with Dad Vibes, like, they were trying at this whole thing of, oh, look at this, look at the way Fred Durst looks and all this kind of stuff to kind of, I guess, advertise the new album that they had just, you know, dropped weeks in advance. I mean, I just... It's one of those things where I don't get why people think that I was taking it seriously. And plus, if you look at a song and you see that it's called Dad Vibes, you would be a little suspect of it too. Again, I don't like judging songs by their song names, but I saw the title Dad Vibes and was like, I am in for a ride that I may not enjoy. But even in the video I said, but you know what? I gotta listen to the whole thing before I can give my full judgment, and I did. I literally reacted to the whole thing reviewed it, and said what I had to say, and I still stand by it, even though the album shocked me a little bit more with what they were able to do and the changes that they made in the band with some of the songs. That song in particular just wasn't it. Like, if that's really what they wanted to highlight the album when there was plenty of other songs they could have put out there, I mean, good lord, they, they did it completely wrong. Like, the album's already called Still Sucks, so 
you don't need advertisement for that. People are going to go listen to that album because you called It Still Sucks. But you could have at least... I'm not saying make another one of the serious songs like the highlight of the album, but you could have at least picked something else, like maybe one of your songs that, you know, from the first two tracks on the album that sounded similar to what you do. That way, you know, maybe some of the older fans would be like, oh, okay, they're still doing that. And then after track three, they'd realize, oh, no, they are doing all this different stuff. And it was actually more interesting than not. Was it good? Not really, but again, the re the reason I think I enjoyed it more than any of their other records is because they went out of their comfort zone and at least tried different things, so that way it wasn't the same boring generic song structure over and over and over again. So that is the last I'm going to even mention what I was talking about in that reaction review, whatever, because people still don't understand that, you know, I wasn't trying to rag on it, that wasn't my intention, but the song is bad, and that's all I was trying to get at, and maybe I did, you know, say things in certain points where it may have came off as I'm just, you know, ragging on the song to rag on the song, but I was a Limbiscuit fan back in the day. I still listen to some of their songs depending on which one it is, and I fell out of love with them because I started to hear the genericness and the same shit over and over again from just album after album that I just couldn't take it anymore. They became boring to me. They were a band that when something new was coming out, I just didn't want to hear it because I already knew what to expect from it. And I thought mostly that's what Dad Vibes was going to be. And sure, it wasn't. But again, I was like, it still sucks. Album name drop. It still sucks because, you know, um, it's just, it's not as generic as what they do, but somebody could make a song like this before. I feel like I've heard this song before and the fact that they went from just being Limp Bizkit to more of a parody of themselves, it's what really, really brought the song down, in my opinion. Alright, so that was it for more reading your comments. Hopefully, um, I was able to go through some of these comments and, uh, not necessarily answer them because these weren't questions, but was able to go through more in depth with them than I would be if I were to just type it in and respond to it because I myself don't write like writing long statements in the YouTube comments. Other people do, but I don't. I like to be short, sweet, and to the point. And sometimes when you're short, sweet, and to the point, there's just some things that you have to leave out that you can't really say because in the end you'll just, you know, write that book that you don't want to write in the comment section. But yeah. Until then, though, stay safe out there, wear your mask, get vaccinated, and I will catch you all in the next one.